look who it is. It's Lola. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by Lola. Can you say hello to everyone? <laughs> Sorry. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name's Molly. On this channel, I share all the knitting projects I've been up to, my future knitting plans, any sort of yarn related things that I've been getting up to recently. Here in the Bay Area where I live, we've had some of our warmest weather so far in the last two or so weeks. And I anticipate that we'll continue to get some of our hottest weather of the year over the next month or two. But I'm still feeling that pull uh, to start planning for the next season to get ready for fall knitting because, at least in my opinion, I find it a little bit more appealing than summer knitting. I think some of the reason that I'm really feeling this inspiration right now is that a lot of other knitters here on YouTube and on Instagram are really gearing up for the changing seasons. They're ready for fall, especially those who live in places where it's going to start getting colder sooner rather than later. And at the same time, I feel like marketing teams all over the place have really been working overtime to push fall products on us. All the supermarkets around me right now are full of all pumpkin everything. And they have been for like a couple weeks and it's still August. Unfortunately or fortunately, it is kind of working on me. I haven't bought anything pumpkin yet, but I guess I am ready for fall in this one way. I've separated my items into two categories today, accessories and sweaters. I have a couple items in each category. If I'm being totally honest with myself, I probably am not gonna finish all of the things I talk about today before the end of the year, but I'm kind of hoping that these will be my focus up through December and till the end of the year. I'll probably be casting on some gift knits, especially, you know, as, as Christmas comes closer. One of these is kind of a gift knit, I guess. As usual, I'm not trying to force myself to knit anything. If some of these things start to feel less fun, less like things I want in my wardrobe, I'll probably pivot if there's something else that I'm really inspired by, especially if it's something where I'm able to use yarn for my stash. All of these projects do use yarn that I've had for at least, I don't know, four or five months. So my goal is to not buy anything new for a bit or to, to limit the amount that I'm buying. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my accessories. These are in no particular order, but the first thing I'll talk about is the Musselboro hat by Isolde Teague. I'll actually be making two of these. So the first one, I'll be using Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock Light in Wild Time. So this is a fingering weight yarn. It's 100% fine Highland wool. It comes in 50 gram hanks that are 218 yards or 200 meters a piece. This is going to be a hat for my boyfriend. I have two of these hanks. And I've made him a muscle bro before. It was in like a DK weight yarn. So folded double as the hat is. Basically I'll use my hat from last year to demonstrate. Actually, it's from a couple years ago. You knit starting at the crown, you knit increases, you knit a tube, and then you decrease for the crown again, and you fold it into itself to make a little double thick hat. So the DK weight muscle burrow that I made him is a little bit too thick for everyday wear. Um, especially here in the Bay Area, but we don't go anywhere that's too, too cold. I also think that it might be a little bit long on him, uh, at least for his preferences, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. I discussed last video about my boyfriend's kind of particular color preferences when he's thinking about an item, he has like a very strong idea of what color he wants it to be. And we were looking at green and he wanted something dark. 
and most of the greens that we were finding were too light or they leaned either too yellow or too blue for his taste. So it was a little bit difficult to find a yarn, but I found this one and I ordered it from Yarn Loop, which is a local yarn store in Texas, I believe. Um, I ordered from them because they had a particular discontinued yarn that I wanted to get more of. I've talked about this a little bit in the past. Um, and we had a little bit of a snafu with the ordering the, of this yarn. They sent me wool stock instead of wool stock light, um, but the exchange went very smoothly. They were very like prompt and very uh, proficient in fixing all of the issues. So I'll link them down below and I do recommend buying from them. The other Muscleboro hat I'll be making is for me. So I'll be using Mrs. Crosby hat box yarn. I'll be using this this one in smoky granite. So I have two cakes. They're both looking a little, a little rough right now. This is a discontinued yarn that I picked up a while ago and I used it to make my Dark Water by Jennifer Steingass. So this is a, I think the pattern is written to be fingering weight, um, color work yoke. It's a little bit different than a lot of the more floral motifs of um, Jennifer Steingass's other patterns. I wear the sweater a lot. I really like it. And I use the dark water as the contrast color. The main color is African gray, which I also have a good amount of. These cakes are in even worse shape. But yeah, I have, I have this too. Basically, I've decided I think that the darker gray would be um, more appealing to me for, for this hat. This yarn is a sport weight. It's 75% merino, 15% silk, and 10% cashmere. It feels really nice. I guess it's maybe a little bit on the heavier side for a sport weight. There's 317 yards per 100 grams. I've been thinking of what to do with this yarn for a long time. I don't know if there's like a particular, <laughs> this is so bad. I don't know if there's a particular color work thing I'd want to make with these yarns, at least with the quantities that I have. So I'm going to start out by making this hat and I think I'll honestly have like a good amount of yarn left over. I was showing this hat earlier. This is my, um, this is my muscle burrow. I made it in Jada Wu Designs Fingering Weight Yarn, 100% Merino. I believe the colorway that I'm using or that I use for this is Jada Wu. I love it and I really like this color, but it isn't, it doesn't go with everything. So I'm really looking for a more neutral hat and one that I can um, maybe get a little bit more warmth from because I find that the fingering weight is just a tiny bit too light for some of the weather that we see, especially when we're in Huntsville, Alabama, visiting my boyfriend's family. These will be my third and fourth versions of the hat. I think my one sticking point of starting these is whether or not I want to make a gauge swatch. So this hat is knit for basically any gauge. And they recommend what you do is that as you cast on at the crown, you knit until you have enough room between the increases to measure like an inch or two to figure out your gauge. I think you actually cast on at least for each size, like, you know, baby through large adult or whatever the sizes are, um, you cast on the same number of stitches for each like starting size. That is like appealing. Obviously gauge swatching is like kind of annoying, but at the same time, it doesn't really account for any like variations in how the yarn will be when it's blocked versus unblocked. So I think that's how my boyfriend's hat ended up a little bit too long. Now, part of it might be the yarns that I chose, and I might have slightly less um, growy. That's not the word I want to use. The yarns that I've chosen this time are probably less prone to growing than the ones that I used for these two. So I had an alpaca wool yarn for my boyfriend's and 
um, this superwash fingering for me. And I mean, I actually am happy with mine. I think it's, um, it's good. I think, especially for my boyfriend's hat, I might swatch. I've never worked with wool stock before, so it might be nice. And I want it to fit him. I care a lot more about how his fits than how mine fits. But if you've made the muscle burr, I'm curious if you've ever bothered gauge swatching, if you've had similar problems to me where the finished hat size is a little bit different than what you're looking for. If you were me, would you gauge swatch? I mean, just let me know because I'm, I'm, I feel like I should, but I don't want to. The next thing I'll be making is the Sunday Morning Wrap by Lisa de Fruscia for um, Espas Tricot. It is a free pattern, which is always super exciting. And it's written for DK yarn, but I'm going to be using this maybe worsted, maybe DK. I don't know, but I'm going to be using this yarn from Bucksnort Alpaca Ranch. Um, that is an alpaca ranch in Grant, Alabama. And the colorway I have is called Shooter. And I believe Shooter is in fact the name of the alpaca. This yarn, um, I have four hanks. I think they're all slightly different weights. I believe they're all 200 yards, but um, the weights are written in like pen. I don't know if you can see that. And I think they vary. So we'll see kind of what the finished product looks like. The, the gauge might vary a little bit, which is part of the reason I think a shawl might be good for this. My initial plan was to make the Nevermore blouse by Kadri, but as I thought about it more, I was, it just seemed like for alpaca yarn, a shawl might be a better move. So I know that alpaca grows quite a bit. I know that, you know, it doesn't have memory. It's not going to like tighten up in the same way. Lola, what are you doing? This yarn is not on Ravelry. This seems like a very niche yarn. I got it at a store in Huntsville called Sparkle Studio that I'll link below. It's in a really cool artist space in this former mill. There's no way to find this on the internet, really. The email on here is just like a lady's name. When I was starting to reconsider making a shawl versus a garment with it, I looked at some Ravelry pages for other 100% alpaca yarns, and I found that a lot of people were making shawls out of it um, scarves, maybe hats, but like things where the fit doesn't matter as much by and large. So ultimately I decided that I would look for a shawl that would use about 800 yards because that's what I had and I landed on this one which says uh, according to the pattern it's 746 yards of yarn to make the Sunday morning wrap. So this is something I hope to finish before I go to Alabama for Christmas this year. The money to buy this was kindly gifted to me by my boyfriend's mom. So it would be really nice to be able to show it to her, to show her the finished product, and also to have it when I'm in Alabama, because like I said, it's a little bit colder than it is here in the Bay Area. Now I'll go ahead and talk about sweaters. This first sweater is one that I've talked about here before, so I'll try not to belabor it too long. It's also the only garment that I've actually started. This is the Be Thankful Cardigan by Lily Kate France. I am using Wool of the Andes Worsted Tweed in Wellies Heather. I've relayed most of this whole saga where I didn't quite have enough yarn, I ordered more yarn, I sent it to my old address, it took, I think, ultimately like three or four months to show up at my apartment. One day it just appeared. So I have it. I also ordered newer yarn in the meantime, but I had waited for a while. So this particular whip kind of fell into hibernation. I only have one sleeve left, but I do have a little bit of a problem. I don't know what needles I used. I'm gonna guess it was somewhere between a seven and a nine. I don't know. So there's part of me that thinks I should frog this, but I probably won't for a couple reasons. This is knit bottom up. So I have multiple different pieces here. I have this sleeve, I have both the fronts, the back, 
after sp um, splitting at the armhole. Um, I have the button band and I really just don't want to deal with so many little fiddly balls. I've actually been doing that a lot recently with things that I frogged. So I'm just like, really don't want to do it again. I think I can try a couple different needles if needed, but I think I can make a relatively educated guess about what needle size I might have used. And I know realistically that as I block it, it'll probably even out a little bit. I could be a little bit more aggressive on that side if I needed to be. I can frog a couple times as I work on figuring out the gauge. You know, I can look and check the gauge. I have options. I also know realistically that like, if I'm close, it won't be noticeable to anybody but me. It just kind of depends how noticeable it is to me because if it is really noticeable, if it really bothers me, I probably won't wear it because I'll just think about how I messed up. So hopefully I can just pick up stitches. I did do the sleeve a little bit differently than the pattern. I did like a light taper before doing a more intense taper at the end. I mostly want to talk about this to like relay my intention of finishing it to you. I need to put it out into the world that I want to finish this and hopefully that will inspire me to cast this on and get a move on. This next pattern is one that I've had on my list probably longer than almost anything else. This is the Shifty by Andrea Mowry. So I'll be using Cascade Heritage Wave for this. That's a fingering weight yarn. It's 437 yards per 100 grams and it's a 75% merino, 25% nylon sock yarn. I have four colors for this. Uh, my first one is woodsy and you can see that the the colors I got here are definitely, there's quite a bit of variation. This skein looks quite different than the others. So I'll probably be doing some pretty heavy alter, alternating of skeins. I have four cakes of this woodsy. I have, um, actually I have two of forest, but I'll probably only use part of one. This. Um, was a color that I struggled to find, so I bought some off of Ravelry from someone destashing it. Then I also bought some from a store, I think a Michigan yarn store that I found online. My last two contrast colors are, man, this one's unraveling a little, Nightshade and Lava. I saw this pattern back in probably mid-2020 and I was instantly like, very taken with it. I was really excited about it. I wanted to cast it on. I wanted to find the perfect yarn for it. So I spent a lot of time looking around at different yarn options. The original pattern is knit in spin cycle. That's the recommended yarn. And there was no way that I could justify to myself, especially back then, um, spending spin cycle money on um, a sweater quantity. I think I bought most of these yarns for full price, with the exception of the one I bought on Ravelry. So it's already, it was already like a pretty big investment for me at that point. And I want to be clear, I'm not saying that there's like a right or wrong amount to spend on a sweater, just given my finances, my situation, the fact that I don't think I'd knit a sweater up to that point, it didn't make sense for me to drop that kind of money on a sweater. I wanted colors that were generally in line with the ones that uh, Andrea Mowry used in her sample. So, you know, I came up with this palette and I think that the whole sweater just kind of feels very fall to me. Like the brown feels like fall. I guess the red and the green too in their own way. I was really intimidated by this pattern for a while. You know, an all over color work fingering weight sweater feels like a pretty intense thing to do, especially cause up to the point that I bought all this yarn, I still had not knit a sweater, but I think I'm ready. I think it's kind of now or never. It's been like over three years since I bought all this yarn. So it's time. And I think that this would be a really good October, November, like 
later fall Thanksgiving sweater. I'm hoping I'll have it done by then. Or at least I'll be semi-deep into the process by like mid-October, I guess. So hopefully this is something you'll see on my needles pretty soon. The last thing I'm going to talk about is probably actually the first thing I'm going to cast on. So that's the Lodestar by Kirsten Rovetta. This is another pattern kind of like the shifty that I saw and was immediately like, ooh, I need one. I'm going to be using Northfield by Valley Yarns. This is 70% merino, 20% baby alpaca, and 10% silk. Comes in 50 gram balls that are 125 or 124 yards each. This sweater initially came out in pom-pom and I bought that issue pretty shortly after it was released. I believe it came out in spring or summer of 2021. I immediately was setting out to look for the perfect yarn for it. I bought a yarn, it wasn't, it, I couldn't get gauge. I was looking in my stash at these yarns um, this one and a sort of similar one, which I'm not going to talk about today, trying to figure out what I was going to do with them because my initial plan had been to knit like a, a mock neck, sort of like a negative ease, like tighter fitting mock neck, but I decided I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to self draft. I just wanted to use the yarn and something else. And when I was looking through Ravelry project pages for this yarn, I saw that someone had used it for the Lodestar and I realized that actually seems perfect. Um, so I don't think I mentioned this yet. The colorway I have is called Sea Spray. Um, and I have eight balls, which is 992 yards. Now I think for my size, I, I, the like recommended amount is somewhere around a thousand yards. So I guess I'm cutting a little bit close. I will probably just knit the body through the like, arm split because it's it's a top down knit the sleeves once i have a couple inches on the body and then just knit the body until i'm either happy with the length or i've run out of yarn and i think i'll run out of yarn around the time that i would be happy with the length so i don't think it'll be a big deal i've already knit a swatch of this i knit it kind of before i had a little bit of a knitting hiatus when i was wrapping up my dissertation and doing all the final tasks for my PhD. I think I might even cast this one on like tonight just because it seems like an easy one to get started on. I have another project that's sort of still on the summer range that I've been working on or about to work on, but for some reason the swatch knitting, I guess because maybe it's because it's fingering weight, the swatch knitting has been going kind of slowly and it's kind of sapped a little bit of my knitting mojo. So maybe casting this on would be the perfect way to sort of bring my knitting mojo back to me. Ultimately, I'm really excited to have this sweater to wear. And it's really nice when you have that win-win where when you realize that this yarn you've had in your stash that you've been excited to use and you really want to use for something plugs in with a pattern that is something you really want to make. I also think that this pattern is going to be nice for a Bay Area fall. It has the lace detailing on the yoke and three quarters sleeves, I think is the patterns written. So I think that that'll be like a good temperature for early to mid fall here in the Bay Area. So that's all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed following along with all the projects that I plan on making. I'm really curious what you are planning on making this fall. Do you have fall plans already? Are you still holding on to the last vestiges of, of summer? Are you still doing the, the cotton, the light tees and tanks? Where are you at uh, with your knitting? What are you working on? I'm, I'd love to hear you tell me in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to go ahead and click that like button below. And if you have not subscribed, please consider doing so if you enjoyed this video. I talk about once a week about all the yarny things that I have been up to recently. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.